Hello everyone. The PFRDA Grade A Exam 2022 Phase 1 that was held on the 5th of November. In this video, I am going to discuss all the 50 questions with detailed answers for the general stream. You will be able to download the PDF for the entire uh, questions and solutions from this description of the video. Hello everyone, welcome to iExamB. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you are always aware of such informational videos. So if I talk about the distribution of questions that have come in the paper too, uh, the questions were very well distributed with eight questions coming from accounts, seven questions from management, five questions from finance, costing there were some nine questions, uh, companies act seven questions, economic seven questions and pension sector seven questions. So very well distributed question paper that was touching almost all aspects from the syllabus. If I also talk about the pattern that has been in the past, if I see the last year PFRDA exam, the pattern was more or less similar with a little inclination towards the finance topics. This year, more uh, uh, inclination had been towards costing and accounts. Finance was, you know, good, well covered and management, companies had economics and pension had almost equal weightage. If I talk about the numericals, Numericals last year in phase one were nine and three in phase two and this year there were around seven numericals. However, all these numericals were very, very easy level. They were direct questions. Application of formula was used to uh, calculate them. So uh, very happy to share with you that out of these 50 questions, 43 questions have been directly covered from the I exam B course, which is a very crisp course where, you know, there are short videos, PDF notes, a lot of questions to practice from at different levels at the chapter level, at the section subject level, at the full exam level. You can practice various types of questions, which helps you to prepare very holistically in a crisp manner, in a very focused manner, which helps your preparation 50% faster. So let's talk about uh, what has been the actual questions, topics that were covered. Before the exam, 10 days before the exam, I had given a video related to what should be your last 10 day strategy, where you should be focusing. So if we compare how the actual has actually turned out, for the 27th of October, I had suggested that in your accounts, focus on revising the accounting conventions and rules, accounting standards, especially related to depreciation, revenue, inventory, financial statements, and ratios and the various types of share transactions, especially the meaning of them. The actual topics that have been covered are same, almost ratios that were there from the cash financial statements. There was one question related to cash flow statement. There was questions from depreciation and from the share transactions. There was questions from. If I talk about companies act, in the companies act, the most important aspects to be covered from, from the prospectors. We had one question from prospectors. Then we had questions from auditors, from uh, the directors, from the meetings related rules and from the dividend. Next, talking about the finance, direct questions were there from the financial markets. There was a concept of hedging hours, which is related to derivatives. And there were some questions from the recent developments. Moving on to the subject of economics, there were questions from the fiscal policy. The questions in economics were very easy and very, very direct fiscal policy and they were also covered in our revision classes as per a lot of students. Same questions we had covered in our revision classes. Inflation was covered. ISLM related questions were covered. In costing, mostly your marginal costing and break even was covered. And then there was a lot of questions on lean systems, very theoretical questions, very scoring questions that had come from costing. If I talk about the management and the pension sector, roles of the manager, this I have been stressing upon a lot of time is the most important. There were three questions from here. From leadership, again, there were approximately two or three questions that came. From NP and APY, they were the maximum questions in pension and there was one other question related to other scheme of PM, uh, PM Vandana, Vandana Yojana. So there was one question related to that. 
And if I talk about numericals, very, very accurate. There were questions on ratios. There were questions on depreciation. There were questions on break-even. And there was one question related to debtor's calculation. So if you were aware about the inventory calculation, similar kind of logic had to be applied here. So very, very accurate is our coverage. And that is why we have been consistently being able to deliver very, very good coverage from our course in the actual exams. Now let's talk about the question wise analysis the 50 questions that had come so these 50 questions you will be able to download also from the description box if i talk about first the commerce and accountancy the first question related to the bank overdraft repayable on demand uh, where is this shown in the cash flow statement it is actually equivalent to cash and cash equivalence it is not a part so very specifically told in our notes and in our various classes that bank overdraft which is payable on demand is a part is its equivalent to uh, cash so it is considered as uh, cash the next questions was related to ratios where you had to calculate the current ratio and the debt equity ratio. Uh, the balance sheet was given to you and based on that you had to calculate. The numbers used here may not be accurate because many of the students were not able to remember but it was somewhere similar to this. You had been given the debt and the equity figures and on the other side you were given details related to cash and inventory. So current ratio is a very simple calculation related to cash and inventory which is your current assets divided by your current liabilities and your debt equity is related to your long-term debt and the equity funding. The numbers here, the answers here may vary because the actual numbers are not available. A lot of practice on the ratios as I already told you we also considered this as an important aspect was very well covered in our course. Talking about the next question, there was an independent ratios uh, related question where you had to calculate the interest cover. Now this interest coverage ratio uh, was again very well discussed is an important kind of ratio according to us and we have been discussing such questions given them in practice in classes a lot of times. Next question was related to ESOPs. What is the vesting period as per the rules? The vesting period minimum should be one year. Again, such kind of information we provide in our classes, in our notes and one such coverage example I have shown you here where a detailed question related to ESOPs was covered where very clearly it was told that as per the share, uh, SEBI uh, companies at share capital and debenture rules, the ESOPs uh, should have a minimum period of one year between the grant of options and the vesting period. The next question was related to calculation of depreciation on a straight line method. Very simple question. You were given the purchase value. You were given the value uh, of the asset at which it was sold after three years and you had to calculate the depreciation that was charged each of the year. So uh, very simple. We had to Calculate this by uh, deducting the cost and the salvage value. That is the value that at which you were able to sell. So 10 lakh minus 4 lakh divided by 3, which gives you a 2 lakh per uh, year of uh, depreciation. Again, such questions have been covered in our course, in our practice test, a lot of uh, at a lot of places. Then accounting standard related to impairment loss. What is the, sorry, here. Yeah. Yeah, the impairment loss on a revalued asset, it is recognized where, in which of these places. So the correct answer is D, other comprehensive income. So if it is not a revalued asset, then you recognize it in the profit and loss. But if it is a revalued asset, then it goes into the other comprehensive income. Again, this concept was explained very, very clearly in the notes and accounting standards related to fixed assets. The next question was related to calculation of the net balance of debtors at the end of the year. Company is providing provision for uh, bad debts and there's a discount. So you had to calculate account segment, commerce and accounting. Now moving to the finance. The questions related to finance, the first question was very, very simple. Who is the regulator of the corporate sector? Now there had been a little confusion whether it, whether it will be SEBI or will it be MCA? The correct answer is MCA because they had asked for the corporate sector. If they had asked for the corporate debt sector, then it would have been SEBI or if the, you know, uh, because in the corporate sector also SEBI helps especially for the 
capital markets related so the listed entities do have to follow the sebi's guidelines as per as the listing guidelines and uh, the capital markets are concerned but if we are talking about the corporate sector it will be mca ministry of corporate affairs there was another conceptual question related to the bank the uh, correspondent bank in case a rupee account is opened by a foreign bank and in india with india in the uh, indian rupee okay so that what is that known as so it is known as the vostro uh, account okay so these are corresponding uh, accounts that are uh, opened uh, for you know carrying on transactions between different countries by different banks indian banks and foreign banks uh again a lot of coverage in the news uh, of this a lot of coverage has been shown here both in terms of uh, the questions and also in terms of the pdf notes then there was a question related to the concept or the mechanism that is related to the maintaining the stability in price after listing of securities what is this mechanism known as it is underwriting front running green shoe option circuit breakers or arbitrage the correct answer is green shoe option so this green shoe option can be provided uh, at the time of an ipo when the shares or the companies are coming which help uh, which can be released in the market to stabilize too much volatility after the listing price listing has been done of the uh, exchange so again this concept has been discussed in various classes related to financial markets and also covered in the pdf notes uh, there, there was one recent developments related questions that as per sebi regulations the alternate investment funds have been allowed to invest in which of the following type of uh, uh, companies recently the correct answer is overseas companies okay so there was a regulation in august 2022 that sebi had updated with relation to alternate investment funds aifs that they will be allowed to invest in securities of the companies incorporated outside india okay so this was done and in this the regulations are given by guidelines are issued by both rbi and sebi then which of the following will help an exporter manage the risk will it be insurance arbitrage hedging uh, insure uh, okay insurance i gave there twice speculation uh, which of them this is used okay or this is none of the above so the correct answer is hedging see uh, there uh, there was a little confusion if it is should be insurance also insurance also helps to uh, uh, you know risk but insurance helps to transfer the risk okay so if the word is used to manage the risk or save from the risk then the correct answer should be hedging because insurance helps to transfer your risk rather than manage the risk okay so this is uh, again covered in lot of questions a uh, lot of pdf notes given by uh, i exam b uh, these were the questions directly from the finance uh, part then moving on to costing there was one question directly from the contract costing which is an example of contract costing is it aeroplane manufacturing real estate sugar industry advertisement or all of the above the correct answer here is real estate real estate there is contract costing that is happening where you know uh, it happens over a longer period of time again such concepts have been covered in questions in pdf notes in classes in videos everywhere i have just shown you one of the example simple numericals were there related to break even analysis where you were given fixed cost and pv ratio and you had to calculate the break even in unit terms and there was another question there where you were given the fixed cost and also a profit that the company wants to earn and the contribution was mentioned and again the break even units had to be calculated the uh, the numbers used here are uh, not the ones in the exam directly i have used here for example purpose okay again a lot of such questions break even analysis is the one of the most important topics that i keep repeating in the costing part then there were a lot of questions related to lean systems one was in six sigma uh, there and the un, under the phase of define the first phase of define uh, which of the following can be used to find the root of the problem okay so you were mentioned given sir, options like voc ci uh, sipoc cpoq dpu or can bud card the correct answer is b si uh sipoc this stands for suppliers inputs process outputs and customer they help in uh, you know getting an overview of what the current situation is and where the problem can lie so this helps in the define phase 
there was another question which of the following is used to uh, to control wastage uh, by con focusing on continuous improvement the correct answer is kaizen here okay which is focusing on continuous improvement then the next question was related to wastage minimization that shows how a workplace should be organized to improve and minimize uh, wastage so the uh, uh, correct answer here was 5s the 5s is another lean system that helps in uh, minimizing wastage by organizing the workplace and these 5s actually stand for five letters uh, uh, Japanese words which means sorting setting in order shine standardize and sustain again both of these questions lean systems have been widely covered in our I exam B course through crisp videos and uh, notes and chapter test as you can see uh, over here very uh, nicely crisply covered the entire topic covering all these questions there was another question related to which of the following type is not a lean system okay whether just in time pull system push system kaizen or none of the above the correct answer is c the push system so push system is not what will uh, what is a lean system because in push what happens is we already have inventory and we are pushing in the market right so we already have supply and we are trying to get uh, to cover it for the demand so that is not a lean system uh, uh, mechanism okay again this concepts have been covered in the videos and class differences a direct question was asked related to the marginal cost definition that the cost which is incurred for an additional product is known as what it is known as the marginal uh, cost okay next question was again there was another question related to six sigma where uh, the uh, one of the models dmadv model was asked and what does one of the d uh, stand for okay so which was not the correct uh, uh, phase as per the dmadv model of the six sigma the correct answer was diagnose diagnose is not uh, the correct model it is actually the design phase the fourth phase is the design phase again this has been widely covered in the uh, I exam B course moving on to the com uh, companies at very very direct good questions had come here simple questions first was related to the CAG of the uh, of a government company has to appoint uh, the auditor within how many days of uh, uh, in a current financial year the correct answer is 180 days so there are two aspects that are given in the companies act here one is related to the first auditor and the other is to the auditors in the financial um, uh, year okay so the first auditor uh, is mentioned as you know you have to appoint it within 60 days and the otherwise uh, notwithstanding any of this the further the regulation says that in a financial year in respect of any financial year within 180 days from the commencement of the financial year the auditor should be appointed again so this has been separately widely covered in the courses questions pdfs videos of the uh, related to this chapter another direct question simple question was related to independent directors how many independent directors should be there in a listed company the correct answer is one third of the total directors should be at least one third of the total directors should be independent directors again this is covered in both the videos pdfs questions and all the next question the next question related to the meetings of the board what should be the maximum period between two consecutive meetings what should be the time period uh, the correct answer is 120 days this was also covered in notes in questions everywhere next question related to red herring prospectors uh, uh, you know it should to be filed with the ROC how many days before the issue opens the correct answer is at least three days it has been covered under section 32 uh, that if it at least three days before the issue opens it should be filed with the ROC again this has been covered in our notes PDFs in our videos in questions in the uh, practice tests of the course next question related to section 44 of the companies act the shares and debentures are uh, or other interest of any member in a company in a movable transferable uh, property in a manner provided 
under which of the company the correct answer is articles of the company this is mentioned under section 44 in the very beginning it has been mentioned that any shares or debentures or any other interest of the company in movable property transferable this should be provided in the articles of the company very clearly mentioned and covered in i exam b course the next question related under the Companies Act was again to the auditors that if the auditors have to be removed, whose approval is required? It is the central government's approval that is required here. Okay, again, something that has been covered. And the last question in the Companies Act related to the interim dividend that it should be paid out of what? And it has to be paid out of the profit and loss account. Again, something that has been specifically mentioned and covered uh, in the notes and questions. Let's move on to the economic section now. Simple questions, direct questions. The first question related to the first question related to the Phillips curve that it defines a relationship between what the correct answer is. Relationship is between inflation and unemployment. They are inversely related. Okay, next question related to the MPC that if MPC increases, what is the effect on the multiplier? The correct answer is the multiplier also increases. Similar question we had in our course also. There was a direct question related to the Fisher equation of money, which of the following correctly describes the Fisher equation. The correct answer is A, uh, PT is equal to MV. This has been uh, giving the Fisher equation. The next question related to uh, the aggregator concept actually they had asked if the income increases the investment will what will be the impact on investment actually it will also increase there's a direct correlation and this has been given by the accelerator uh, concept again something that has been covered and similar question was also there. The next question was related to the core inflation that what is not included in core inflation. The correct answer is food is not included in core inflation. That is how it is different from the headline inflation. Now another question was related to the direct benefit transfer scheme. This is related to transferring of which of the following. It is indirect taxes, subsidies, says indirect income tax deductions or all of the above. The correct answer was subsidy. So sub direct benefit transfer scheme was launched to help transfer the schemes directly to the beneficiaries. And the last question related to very, very simple. The fiscal year of the government ends on which of the following dates? The correct answer is 31st March. We follow the financial year. The government also follows the financial year, which starts from the 1st of April and ends on the 31st of March of the next year. Moving to the pension sector, the questions were mostly from the NPS and from the uh, Atal Pension Yojana. The first question was which of the following are not eligible to apply in the NPS scheme? It is the persons of Indian origin. This has been specifically mentioned under the NPS scheme. We had a similar question being covered in the course also. The next question related to the, uh, sorry. The PM Y Vandana Yojana, where they were asking what is the upper limit of joining this? Actually, there is no maximum age that has been defined. You start at the 60 years of age and it's a 10 years scheme. Uh, next question was which of the following is not available as an investment choice under active choice for NPS? The correct answer is ULIPS. ULIPS is not an investment choice. There are four asset classes which consist of equity, corporate debt, government debt and alternate mm -hmm. funds. The next question related to what is the name of the grievance redressal portal for pensioners? The correct answer is centralized pensioners grievance address redress and monitoring system also known as CPEN grams. Okay, so this was in news uh, and if you had been following the news, you would have been able to answer this question. The next question related to which of the following with regard to default nominee for an unmarried person in Atal Pension Yojana. So in case of Atal Pension Yojana, if you are not married, you can nominate anybody as the nominee. But after marriage, the spouse details have to be provided. The next question related to what was the processing time for withdrawal from NPS? Uh, it is T plus 2. Uh, there is a little confusion about this question. Some students also mentioned that they were not asking about the withdrawal, but they were asking about the deposit of the contribution. So if it is related to deposit of the contribution, it will be T plus 1. But if it was related to withdrawal, then it will be T plus 2. Recently, the government 
uh, PFRD has reduced this timeline from, from T4 to T2. So depending on the question, the answer will be accordingly. The next question related to in case of upgradation of pension contribution under Atal Pension Yojana, what is the differential amount of contribution at what rate it has to be given? It has to be paid at a differential rate of 8% percent if you are upgrading your account uh, the monthly pension under the atal pension yojana after this the questions related to management were conceptual in nature and the application of your concept the first question uh, was related to leadership where you had to find the leadership style where it is characterized by high relationship orientation and high task orientation this was in reference to the managerial grid the correct answer is team management where you giving high importance to both right so team management you give both task management only the task is on favor in country club only the relationship is favored okay so this was again widely covered next question was related to uh, the management thought where the, uh, the whole is greater than the sum of parts this is uh, discussed under the systems theory the systems uh, uh, approach to management Okay, then there were, I have not been able to recreate the exact questions. The questions were related to transformational leadership, transactional leadership also. And there were three questions that were related to the roles of the manager. So you had been given, described a situation and you had to identify which role the manager is playing here. So again, we have had very detailed discussions about various kind of roles uh, of manager and the leadership styles. And our students have come back very happy saying that they were able to attempt all questions in management very easily and uh, confidently. Because of the various discussions we have done on this topic in detail through MCQs, through videos, through PDFs, by giving a lot of examples and through case studies. So as I said, if you want to download, you will be able to download this PDF from the description box, uh, which is the full memory based paper with detailed answers here. Uh, at I exam B, we help you unfold your potential with deep discussions, with relevant questions, with relevant and crisp content which helps you prepare 50 percent faster all this is possible because of our expert faculty who have expertise in the domains of the exam for phase two we are ready to help you and guide you for descriptive english dr sanjeev sharma and arunima ma'am for your various streams like general and finance we have the various faculties including myself prachi agarwal sushil ragde sir aditi ma'am neha rora ma'am and shikha ma'am for legal we have vidika ma'am neha ma'am and Am ma'am for research we have aditi ma'am and shikha ma'am for it jayanti ma'am and for raj bhasha pratima ma'am to help you prepare holistically not just for pfrd exam but also for the sebi exam which is the exact pattern as pfrd exam so wishing you all the best uh, and thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon and hope you have started your preparation for phase two of pfrda in case of any query you can fill in the uh, google form that is available in the description for any kind of further help thank you and all the best